Hey everybody, Dave here again. Got an exciting video for you because what I want to show you today is how to generate an SSL certificate with one line of code and one executable. And to do that, I want to start off by giving some credit. And the credit that I need to give is going to be to Alexander Yezhov. Okay, so this is his uh, GitHub repo. Uh, he created this Crypt LE. Uh, essentially, it's a way for you to create a Let's Encrypt uh, certificate, SSL certificate. And you can do that right here on your Windows machine. And you can either use HTTP or DNS verification. And so here's his uh, LinkedIn site if you want to uh, go ahead and connect. It's at linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash leaders. And then you can uh, try to connect out with him. All right. So to simplify things so that you don't have to go in and learn all of the different switches and things of that nature. Um, as of the date of this recording, which is uh, June the 2nd in the year 2022, I went ahead and grabbed the latest LE64 EXE from his site. And what I did is I downloaded it and I created this other text file for you guys. And this text file, I want you to just go ahead and choose to copy all of the raw contents out. And then what I want you to do is I want you to paste it into something like Notepad. Okay, now when you do that, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to get this, this one Well, yeah, sorry. Let's do this again. So what you're essentially going to get is this huge one line of code. So let me go ahead and copy that out and paste it in. Okay. So that's what this one line of code looks like. Right. But if we look above before I pasted this in uh, all of this stuff, it's formatted so that it fits on screen a little bit better. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. And so here's a couple of uh, things that you need to know. So in order to run this, all you need to do is change out this uh, double bracketed thing that says anything that says your, okay, so your email, your domain, your password, three pieces of information, you need to put your information in here, okay? Now, the way that I've set this up, I've set it up, well, actually, let's just go through each one of these, what it does. So the key account is going to generate a key for essentially your account. Okay. This, this flag simply just says to go ahead and create that. And the email is going to email you when your certificate is about to expire. Now, because the certificate uses the let's encrypt free SSL, these certificates are not long lived. They're great for development. They're great for power app, power portals, uh, which is one of the things that I use it for in my video series on class on Udemy. And the other thing to note of, you know, anything that needs a certificate on IIS or whatever, uh, it's going to generate a Windows specific certificate, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, the other thing it's going to do is create the certificate signing request. And so this is the flag for that. And then it's going to create the key for the domain. Okay. So this is going to be your private key. And then the CRT, this is the actual domain certificate itself. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to specify this generate missing uh, flag, which basically says if you don't pass this information uh, in because maybe you don't have it. And this is the case. You're not going to have it because you're creating it brand new. Uh, this, this is why this script is so brilliant. You can just use one line and it'll generate the CSR. It'll generate the certificates. And then down here, uh, you just specify your domain name. So the domain name that you want to create this SSL certificate for, and you can use multiple domain names. So www.whateveryourdomainname.com, and you can comma separate multiple domain name or multiple URLs. So, uh, you know, there's a, uh, Another syntax that you'll have to use to do wildcards, and I encourage you to use the LE64 dash dash help. I want you to go ahead and read through that. So the help file is baked into the executable, but this is not for that. This is not for wildcards. Uh, you, you'll have to go in and format it the way that you want to format it if you want to do that. But in any event, a comma separated list, uh, you can use it. And what I'm going to show you here, uh, the way I've got it configured, um, and if you look down here, I've already got this pre-configured, right? So I've got my email in here. And so the generating a domain name that I'm going to use is udemy.davidsoden.com. And the reason for that is, is because that's the class that I teach uh, on Udemy about the Power App or Power Portals. 
And so uh, with that being said, this next flag, export PFX, this is generating the Windows-specific certificate uh, that you need for uh, most Windows-based applications or Windows domains. It's also what is needed by the Pow Microsoft Power App Power Portals. It wants a PFX certificate. Uh, now, this next flag says... Uh, when we do this, we want to generate this so that we can, in other words, the Let's Encrypt SSL job needs to verify that you are, in fact, the owner of the domain name that you're trying to create an SSL certificate for. And because this is being used on the Power Portal, I don't have access to the server, so I can't put a very specific file on the web server. However, if you do have a web server and you do have access to the file system, uh, you can, again, go pull in the help file, but <clears throat> you won't need this. And by default, it'll just simply generate the file for you to copy up to the server and, and it'll wait. And then this last flag, if you don't specify this, what will happen is it'll create a certificate for you, but it'll create it for or under a test scenario or a test server account. It's not a real live SSL certificate. So all of this is baked into here. So again, just three pieces of information. Now I'm going to show you actually how to run it using uh, the command. Again, I uh, went ahead and when you do the export PFX, you have to specify uh, your password. So make sure that you, you know, you specify that in there as well. I think I had it in here. Yep. That's what this is right here. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to hop over into my C drive, which is where I have this stored out. And... Uh, you can or should put this in a folder, okay? So put it in a folder anywhere, or you can do it just like I did. You can just put it in the root of the C drive and, and run it there. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to type CMD to get to a command prompt. And what you want to do is you want to open up two command prompts, and I'll show you the reason why in just a second. So CMD again. <clears throat> All right, now I have the second command prompt. So I'm going to do CD backslash CLS to clear the screen. Let's find the other. Um, yep, here's the other one. Whoop, let's get rid of that. All right, CLS, CD backslash CLS again. Okay, so we've got two of them. So I'm in the C drive. I'm just going to paste in this command. So the LE64, right, in the very beginning, right here, right, this LE64 is saying I want you to run this EXE, and then you're going to pass in all these parameters that I showed you from that one-liner. Again, I changed out the three items for me. You're going to need to do it for you. And then all you do is hit Enter. So as soon as you do that, it's going to go out and start generating a bunch of stuff. And so as it's doing all of that, this is great. Okay, and so now it's got to the point where it's done what it needs to do, but it's waiting on you to do something. Okay, so you got to read real careful and keep your, your eye on uh, the last couple of lines here, specifically this area right here, because it's, it's, this is what it's waiting for you to do. And it's saying that the challenge for you to me .com requires the following DNS records to be created. So essentially what we need to do is we need to create this TXT record. Okay, so I have to create a uh, underscore acme dash challenge dot udemy dot davidsoden.com. So essentially this is the host for the txt file. So I'm going to copy out everything up to, but not including the dot davidsoden.com. So I'm going to copy that out. And now what I'm going to do is jump over here into the browser. And I'm going to jump over to where I keep my DNS settings and stuff, which is uh, Google Domains, which is about the cheapest you can find out there, at least as of the date of this recording. So now I'm in my DNS records and I need to create a new record and I'm going to do it of type text. So scroll down to TXT and I'm going to paste in that Acme dat, or underscore Acme challenge dash you to me. Okay. Again, without the trailing dot. So uh, at the very end of this, there's no period. So you can see down here, Acme, uh, you can see down here, it, it looks exactly as it does in this file. Now, everybody from GoDaddy to everybody else works a little bit differently. You're going to have to know how your DNS 
web-based service works or if you're using Azure Active Directory or some other type of DNS like, uh, what is it on AWS? I think it's um, area or something 53, DNS 53 or something. Um, in any event, so uh, there's the host name copied out. Now what I need to do is I need to grab off this value all the way up to and including the, uh, the the QE. So the way you copy, you just highlight it out with your cursor, and then I hit Control C on the keyboard. Okay, so then that copies it out. So now I'm able to paste the value in here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And it's saved. It says the custom records are saved. Okay, now let's continue to read on the next line. It says wait for DNS to update by checking it, and, and I'm reading from here, right here. I'll try to highlight it. It says wait for uh, the DNS to update by checking it. So on Windows, if you're not familiar with this command, it's just an NS lookup, but you're specifying a very particular query. And because we can't or can't uh, do anything to this window, that's why I had you open up the second command prompt. So this is where we're going to uh, type in or put in the NS lookup. And now we're just going to hit enter. And we can see that it did find it. It's not from the authoritative server, but it was able to run a query against it. And this, in fact, is the value that I'm looking for. It matches there. So now you can go ahead and minimize that. Now, this is tricky, right? So if you click in on the screen, for some reason, at least in Windows 11, it might work different on Windows 10 or another version of Windows that you have. I found that you have to click on the title bar at the very top. So you see how I'm moving the window around and doing that clicks on it. Now I don't touch anything else. Just hit enter on the keyboard and you see that the cursor jumped down one little line. If you didn't catch it, rewind the video a little bit and you'll be able to see it. So now what it's doing is it's going out and finishing the process and go ahead and creating the SSL certificate. And you can see it's all done. And so that's all you have to do. That's it. You now have a valid PFX certificate. And so here's the domain.pfx. The rest of this you can throw away and trash. However, I do highly suggest you at least minimally uh, keep the key, the domain cert, and the domain pfx. These are the actual, uh, first of all, it's the key itself to the domain name. It's also the cert. It's also the uh, Windows uh, converted version of it, the pfx file. So all of this happened. You don't have to use OpenSSL. You don't have to find a conversion tool online. Again, this is so awesome. So, you know, really, really, really great work uh, to Alexander over here uh, in London, it looks like. But anyway, this is his site. So now, uh, if you just want to kind of see what this looks like, double click on the PFX and we can put in, uh, just kind of follow the wizard. Now here, uh, you do have to say, do you want to export this or do you not want it to be exportable? For good measure, I just always put that in there. Now we need to put the password in. So I'm going to grab the password that I had put in here because this is what it needs to be. This is the password that we chose when we generated it. So uh, it's a secure password, but obviously it's uh, just, you know, really easy to figure out. In any event, I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to look at it so to make sure that it's right and it looks good and just follow through with the wizard and hit finish. It says that import was successful. So with any luck on Windows 11, I'm just going to type in C-E-R-T-I and I see manage user certificates. I'm going to click on that. And then when this loads up, it's actually did load up, but it sent it to the back. I can see it down here. So I'm going to come down here and click on it. All you need to do now is click, double click rather on this personal folder, double click on this certificates folder. And here is the Udemy. Dot com. It's issued by R3, which is the Let's Encrypt Certificate. And if you come over here to the Certificate Path, um, you can find that it's all the way out there to, to the root. So this is now a valid SSL uh, with the password encrypted. And so it's all bundled and packaged up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and or subscribe. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.